What's better than one project car? Two project cars. Ha <laughs> ha. I'll drink to that. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and try to go faster. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you'll know we've got a project car, Project Rally 36, which I'm slowly, slowly turning into a Clubman Rally car. And yeah, okay, that's one project, but um, you know, plenty of people have got loads more projects. I mean, super fast Matt's got about 36, I think. So I want more, I'm a bit jealous. So we're gonna take this, my auto test mini, that currently works, and turn it into another project car. So you may not know that this is a bit of a Frankenstein's monster and contains an engine that has no business being in that engine bay. And I changed that, converted it without a single clue what I was doing. As such, it's compromised. Another way would be to say it's shocking. We are going to, from here forwards, if it holds the wheels on or keeps the engine in, it's getting changed. So to achieve this, I'm gonna to pull together everything we've talked about on the channel so far. So 3D scanning, reverse engineering, 3D modeling, 3D printing, fabrication, everything. So this is gonna be a good one. Right then, first off, let's explain why this is so compromised. So from these clips, <laughs> Looks like the car goes pretty well. So what's wrong with it? Why are we doing this project? Well, there's a few things that aren't quite right. <gasps> the springs are still rubber donuts, made for the A-series engine, so they're the wrong spring rate, and to get a good low ride height, the big wheels, the top arm angle is wrong, so it pushes the donut across rather than compressing it. The roll center is completely wrong, far too low, so I get lots of body roll. To get enough Ackerman to spin the cone, I have to have massive toe out. With the wheel spacers, the scrub radius is huge, which gives lots of torque steer. The brakes are weak and don't have any assistance, so aren't strong enough to lock the front wheel, so I smash up reverse gear when I change. So that's a long list. And that is just the suspension and the brakes. There's more. Then there's the subframe itself. It's weak. It's far too weak. In fact, if I hit the brakes too hard, then the top arm on the suspension flops around like Ron Jeremy running for a bus. And second, just look at it, it's horrible. Looks like random bits have been added after the event by a blind toddler learning to weld. Badly. And that's because that's pretty much what happened. I designed this, no, not designed. I did not design this, I just made it. And I made it far too lightweight and far too weak. So I've had to add lots of triangulations, which have made it quite heavy. And it's still not strong. In fact, to help you visualise the problem, I've made a scale model. Next problem is the drive shafts. As it stands, they're not straight because I couldn't get the engine far enough back. So they come into the CV joints at an angle. So there's a limit to the amount of steering lock I can put on before the CV joints instantly turn into grenades. Right. One, two, five. Please, up. Three. Not good. And speaking of the CV joints, they're made for about 60 horsepower and skinny 60s rubber. Not meant for 100 horsepower and modern wide tyres like we've got here. And finally on the drive shafts, you may have seen this video where I showed you how I make my own, where I weld a bit of Vauxhall shaft to a bit of mini shaft. Well, even my welding, it turns out, is stronger than a mini drive shaft. These are the primary cause of me not finishing events. Got to be changed. So let's just take a moment to understand what we're asking of this little mini and why these things are such problems. So the sport I do is called auto testing and it's a bit of a strange sport. You have to follow a preset path around many, many cones with lines drawn between them and some lines you've got to drive over forwards, some lines you drive over backwards, sometimes you just put the rear wheels over them. Sometimes you just put the front wheels over them. And sometimes you do a crazy combination of all of them. Now there's lots of different types of cars, but as you can see, they need to be lightweight, powerful, maneuverable, 
and most importantly, fairly sturdy, because this is an aggressive sport on the car. So what's this project actually going to be about? Well, we've just gone through all the problems and why it's currently wrong. So realistically, the aim has got to be just to fix all the problems. Well, yes, that is the aim, but it's a little bit high level. So let's have some actionable items that we can really drive towards. So number one, nothing should break. Everything has got to be strong enough. I first built it prioritizing lightness over strength. And I've since had to add a lot more weight back in. No good, strong first. Number two, adjustability on everything, especially suspension, because it is quite complicated and I am very unlikely to get it right first time. Number three, straight drive shafts. Yes, that seems like a good idea, but also importantly, it gives me more steering lock before bad things happen. A four, proper suspension. So do away with the little mini rubber rings, the donuts, bad. I wanna use proper motorsport coilover unit so I can pick the damping and the spring so it is actually a right for the car. Number five, wide track. Yes, wide track has lots of advantages, but also it just looks super cool. And finally, number six is to remove more mini bits from this mini. Yes, there's not much left that's original, but what is left was never designed for this amount of power or traction, and they're getting harder to get hold of and more expensive. So let's replace them with bits from modern cars that were heavier and more powerful. That way, they've got less chance of breaking in the first place, but if they do, it'll be a lot easier and cheaper to replace them. So those are the aims, and if we do all of them, then what we should have is a car that's much faster and more reliable at doing the silly little sport that I do. So, time for step one, gather some information. Time to scan it. First job was to get an all round scan of the car so I can get ride heights, wheel positions, and all the dents captured perfectly. For this, I broke out the Einstar, as this type of scanning is a right in its sweet spot. I got the whole car in three scans and combined them in the XStar software automatically. But looking at the floor and other details, it's not quite right. So we'll be putting them together later. Next job is a detailed scan of the subframe as it stands at the moment. So engine positions, suspension arm angles, pivot positions, everything. Because I really need to understand the layout as it is at the moment so I can make damn sure that I don't repeat any of the same mistakes. Next up, I took the car to bits because I needed detailed scans of the bulkhead and of the engine itself. These will be my main building blocks for the designing that's to come, so I need the cleanest scans possible so I can pull as many dimensions and do as much designing off the 3D scans as I possibly can. So if you're sitting there thinking, why bother 3D scanning, just build it in real life? Well, after I took these scans, I was able to put the car back together and carry on doing events all through last year whilst I did nothing on this for about eight months. So I've now made it so I can digitally procrastinate whilst I'm actually having some fun driving the car in real life. That works for me. Now we've got the scans, we need to organize them and put them all together. So I'm gonna do all of that in Mesh Mixer. First job is to assemble the car from the first four scans. And all I'm using here is the transform tool. It's fairly simple, but it does take a little time to get it just right. Once we have them all aligned, we can use the combine function to make them into one single mesh. And we do a little bit of tidying up of the messy bits and we're good. But I want to be able to remove the bonnet and the front clamshell from the full model. So I highlight each of these in turn, use the separate command to make them individual meshes. So now we can take the bonnet off and the front off and we can start putting some detail into the model. So I import the scan of the bulkhead and position that correctly against the body shell. 
Next job is to import the detail scan I've made of the engine and suspension, so we've got some detail under the bonnet. And once in position, I delete the overlapping sections of the mesh, so the features of the car are only on one scan and not represented multiple times. And now we have everything in position, we can go ahead and export all of the meshes and they will all be referenced correctly to each other in the global coordinate system. So I tend to use Mesh Mixer for a lot of this early manipulation of meshes because it tends to handle large meshes fairly well. Now there's a lot of information on the screen here, over 16 million mesh faces and 800 megabytes of mesh. And you can see it's handling it very well. Now, I could reduce the mesh in Mesh Mixer, but hey, shits and giggles, let's go and see how this imports into Fusion, see how that handles it. So importing into Fusion was dead easy and everything aligned in Mesh Mixer as you'd expect. And look, it's, you know, not even lagging that much. All the workflow I use to do this is in this video here. But if you're really interested in a step-by-step -step process, then, I mean, I, I don't know, put in the comments, show me the steps. And I might, might do an extra video showing you step-by-step. -step. So that's it for this video. And yes, whilst we haven't got a lot done, what we have got is a pretty good start. And we've got all the information there, so I can do all the designing I need to do from my warm house whilst drinking a cold beer. And whilst you're waiting for the next episode to come out, I suggest you check out the Making for Motorsport Facebook page and the Facebook group, which is a great place for you guys to come together, talk about cars, talk about techniques, ask for advice, and generally show off your latest project, like this fella with his 4AG engine on a Speedwino and getting throttle bodies. Me likey. So if you're liking this nonsense, then please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, it really does help. And if you really want to help out, then head over to the website and you could buy some merch. And hopefully you'll look as good in it as these fellas. And if you buy some, then you can send me your picture and you'll be featured at the end of the next video as well. And if you really, really want to help out, then the final God tier level is joining the patron and these fine human beings here. And for that, you will get some extra updates and free access to all of the files that I'm going to use throughout this whole process. That is it for now. So I'll simply say, stay hydrated. And yeah, waste not, want not. Mm. That's good subframe. Yummy.